Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to build and fly the Bone Drone, an interesting looking quadcopter that pretty much started as a joke by Rotorite. In this video I'm going to show you the components that I've used, give you my feedback after testing out this awkward beard and show you some flight footage. First of all, this build is based on the bone frame. It is manufactured by an unknown company which decided to take Rotorite's idea and use it in order to design their own frame. This specific version, which you can find of course linked down below, is available in two versions. I've got the version which is compatible with up to 5 inch propellers, has a wheelbase of 230 mm and uses 16 by 19 mm M3 motors mounting holes. You can also get a smaller 208 mm wheelbase version, which is compatible with up to 4 inch propellers and uses 12 by 12 mm M2 motor mounting holes. As for the included components, in addition to the single piece carbon fiber plate, you're getting a 3D printed TPU canopy, which will enable you to secure a nano sized FPV camera, an immortal T antenna, and the antenna of the VTX a bag with screws and bolts for securing the canopy to the frame, motor protectors, which are not really needed, a metal file and some stickers. As for the specs of this very simplistic frame, the thickness of the carbon fiber plate is four millimeters. On the center of the frame, you can find 20 by 20 millimeters M3 mounting holes for securing your stack. The carbon fiber plate is carved in order to better protect the wires of the motors. On its own, the carbon fiber plate weighs 25.3 grams and along with the screws and the 3D printed canopy, the total weight of the frame is about 43 grams. Here you can see what it looks like when the frame is assembled. And even though it looks very strange, after all, it is a quadcopter. And the only difference between this frame and other traditional quadcopters is that the back and front motors are very close to each other. As for the other components of this quadcopter, in this build I've used the Zeus 35 Pro all-in-one flight controller, the AJRC Zeus Nano VTX, an Express LRS radio receiver by Flywo, the Runcam Racer Nano FPV camera, and the Brother Hobby LA2005-2450 KV motors. In addition, as you can probably tell, the highlight of this build is that it is very narrow and in order to make it more portable, I've used the Dalprop Fold V2 5-inch propellers. As for its weight, without a battery, this build weighs 181.5 grams and including a 900 mAh Forest LHV battery that should provide you with roughly 5 minutes of flight time, the total weight is 272 grams. Now, even though using the configuration that I've just showed you, this is not a sub 250 grams build, in case you'd like to make it lighter, you can simply use a smaller battery and avoid using the bottom battery protector. In addition, this canopy is not compatible with the Cadex Vista digital transmission system because it is too low, and in case you'd like to make this build digital, you will need to 3D print your own custom canopy, which you can find linked down below. Now for the most interesting question, how does it fly? To my surprise, it is very similar to a traditional quadcopter. I expected the yaw authority to be very minimal, but it wasn't the case. And the only downside, in my opinion, of this build is that it is quite difficult to take off the floor because the bottom motors are very close to it. So you'll need to raise the motors above the ground that's the reason I used the button battery protector. And also you need to make sure that the battery is not going to get in touch with the propellers. I had two incidents with two batteries that nearly destroyed the batteries. And luckily they were just scratched. But that's the main downside of this build. And overall, I wouldn't recommend building it because it's a good build. And probably the main reason that will make you build this awkward quadcopter is that you'd like to add something interesting to your fleet. So in case you'd like to build something interesting, I say go for it. The frame itself is pretty inexpensive. And after flying this build a couple of times, you can just take off the electronics and use them on another build. I'm going to post a thrust test of these motors soon 
as they are pretty powerful for their size, so stay tuned for their upcoming video. Now I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, so I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.